terms of turning into social housing for local people. Now, the uh, community groups like DCHA have been active in Summerhill for quite some time, and obviously it's a place where there's a lot of a lot of gentrification. Gentrification's gone at quite a fast pace there. So the local community were right behind us in this demand, and that was kind of seminal to what we were trying to do. The second demand we had was a bit more radical, and it was that compulsory purchase be extended to all vacant land and property across the across the county, whether it's owned by the council or private holders. We, 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 we say that there's a moral imperative, and it kind of ties into some of what uh, Vincent was saying about, I guess, natural, uh, about natural rights and justice. Uh, we believe that there's a moral uh, imperative that uh, private property should be put to public use if it's lying vacant. Uh, rather than people hoarding it and accruing value, it should be put to use for housing. And then our third demand is kind of a bit more substantive, a focus around uh, security of tenure, ending evictions, and securing fair rents. So I guess that's a little bit about the start of the movement, but where did it come from? Um, I already mentioned repeal. I think repeal and marriage equality can't be understated. The effect of those two social movements on Irish society really can't be understated, especially among young people. Young people in, uh, were played a seminal role in those campaigns and throughout their course kind of found their own agency and found that it could be agents of change. Uh, they're, they're people power movements. We got to a referendum because we had thousands of people out in the streets demanding a referendum. We got, to, we got the referendum through in the end because there were hundreds of people across all communities in the country campaigning and knocking on doors for uh, reproductive rights and choice for, for, for all who, who, who need it. So I think that really, that really changed a lot of things for people. It radicalised a new layer of people and it opened up kind of a political imaginary for people. And uh, that led, fed directly into this, I think. And it's been said a lot in the media that Take Back the City is a youthful movement. And I think that comes directly out of repeal. But there's also a broader point, and I think it's maybe something that's international too. It's that young people are, like, we're locked out, we're locked out of our futures, and we're beginning to, we're, we're the first generation in, in, in years uh, to, to, to face the prospect of being worse off than our parents. Um, we face uh, massive catastrophes like climate change, uh, we, there's no such thing as a secure job anymore, uh, wages and precarity are, are new realities in the world of work for young people. So uh, really kind of the future, our future is being limited but young people at the same time are becoming politicised and are unwilling to accept that limitation of our future. So we've seen manifestations of this in Britain with the Corbyn movement, in America with the DSA surge and the kind of resistance to the Trump presidency. Uh, and in Ireland I'd argue that repeal and the housing movement are, are kind of manifestations of that. Um, so I have a minute left, so I'm just going to really uh, <laughs> rush through a couple of things here. Um, so yeah, the, the strategy so far, we've been in three occupations. We've uh, had sit-downs across the city, we've had community events, like family fun days and concerts. And really the goal so far has been to broaden out past that small area of activists. And we've, been, we've done remarkably well at that. <coughs> uh, what started as seven small grassroots groups is now 18 groups. Uh, what started off as 30 people on ro constant rotation in occupation Summer Hill has become 400 people that have done shifts in an occupation of over six hours in length. Um, we've now seen, this just this weekend in the National Day of Action, we've seen 30 events uh, across the country in all major cities and towns. Uh, we've seen 2,000 people on the street shut down the bridge for an hour. Um, so I think this is really the start of a mass movement on housing. And uh, its next test is going to be, I think, October 3rd, the demonstration that's been mentioned. Uh, as part of the coalition, but that won't be the end either. And I think that take back the city kind of opens up possibilities for what the housing movement can be, and uh, hopefully it will uh, deliver this time, and hopefully will resolve the questions that Dennis Dennehy and uh, DHAC unfortunately couldn't uh, in the 60s. Thanks, everyone. Thank occupation that seems to be the present. And I'm not altogether sure how I got there to bring you out of me. I'm actually from Oxford, I'm not from this area at all. Um, and my uh, real relation to the housing crisis actually is that for the first three years of my degree, I've just finished my four year degree, I did English Media and Cultural Studies in IDT itself. And for the first three years, every day I would get the bus at half six um, from Oxford, from Ferns, very small village, um, to get to uh, Fox Rock and walk down and, and be at college. 
um, and that was um, purely because I was priced out of Dublin, um, as Conor has used the phrase, um, locked out, locked out of education. We have the second highest fees in Europe and we have just the most accentuating circumstances when it comes to trying to find somewhere to live in Dublin. It's just impossible. The amount of students who, in my time as a student and, I've, and in my time as a student union president and let me know that I have only been president since the 1st of July of this year, who have come to me to say that they're, they're living in hostels, they are couch surfing, they're literally moving from one friend's house to the other every day on a week in week out basis and students who just quite frankly are deferring, they're dropping out, they have no means to be in college anymore because they just simply can't afford to be there and they want with everything to be there and they just can't be and it's just the most heartbreaking thing in the world to have someone want something so bad whatever degree it is and like IDT is quite obviously a very creative college you know to have someone's dream just kind of go like down the toilet because we have nowhere to put them when we do as you see with Take Back the City have somewhere to put them it's just quite frankly heartbreaking so my perspective here I was asked to be here obviously from the student perspective so if you look at IDT we can't build purpose built student accommodation and that's something that I've spoken to the real president of IDC, um, Annie Zuna, she's very wonderful and um, she has a much more important job than I do. And she would love to build student accommodation, but the government currently won't allow for that. So one of the things that I would be lobbying for and would be talking to Richard and everyone about is the idea that we would get secure capital grants for the higher education institutions to build purpose-built <coughs> accommodation. Now we talk a lot lately about purpose-built student accommodation and the problem is, is that there's this idea of luxury student accommodation where we have bowling alleys and cinema screens and it costs you 225 euro a week to start i don't know a single student who has 225 euro in their back pocket any given week for their rent for their food for any material costs for their leap card top up to get home at the weekend to see their mommy i don't know anyone who has that amount of money let alone just to spend that on their rent it's quite frankly astonishing my parents in 1991, I was born in 1992, bought their house for 7,000 euro in Wexford. 7,000 euro in some places in this area we can get you a month's rent. It might not be you too, you know? It, like, it's just, there's no, Vincent spoke about the lack of a sense of emergency. It's not like repeal. Like when I, I canvassed with um, North Wexford together with the S and it was such a strong, everyone had such strong feelings about it, whether they were on one side or the other. Like I was spat on campaigning during that, you know, it's, it's something that created this urgency and there isn't that at the moment apart from with the people who are directly affected. And everyone knows someone who is directly affected by the housing crisis, but we just need to be doing more about it. And I suppose the question is, is that what can we do about it? What can we do to make the government actually do something? And the fact of the matter is, is that it comes down as simply as our students' union, me sitting down with my welfare officer, my education officer, and us agreeing that we would put caps on our student accommodation page. We have a Facebook page, it's called IDC Accommodation Page, and we won't put anything on it that is above 150 euro for seven days a week. And that might sound like very little to some, because quite obviously a lot of you would have families and children and you have mortgages and I understand that you have to pay them but a student paying 150 euro is a student who might have a job and a grant and are stretching to pay that. There's a woman who came in over the summer, if I got it, I don't remember her name, I wouldn't name her anyway, but she tried to argue with me that I should be charging at least 200 euro, I should be putting up 200 euro on that Facebook page and that that should be an acceptable thing and then bills should be on top of that as well. So you're talking maybe 250 euro a week a week like that's crazy you know and she would she didn't understand what i was saying was realistic and what she was saying was unrealistic and she basically told me i was wrong and that i didn't get to set the market but no i don't get to set the market but i have to set something so that the students are in some way protected from people who could up the rent at any moment because the problem with dates and that is predominantly the accommodation for students in IT in this area because there are no uh, purpose built student accommodations, etc. I have two minutes, I'm going to slow down or speed up, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, but we, we 
are reduced to just having digs. And the problem is that there is no contract, there's no rules, there's no regulations. So who else is going to put that there?